it's Matt with Test for Truckers, and this video today is about what the heck do all these switches and gauges do? <laughs> Let's start right off. Obviously, that's the speedometer, tells you your road speed, self-explanatory. Now this one, this is your tachometer, it tells you basically your engine speed, how fast your engine is spinning. Now if you, if it spins too fast, then the engine can blow up, as I've seen several times, unfortunately. But anyway, for a diesel, uh, over the road diesel engine, usually the red line's around 1500, 1600. Usually, I don't know any ones that go past uh, 1700. So keep the RPMs within the RPM range. Consult your uh, owner's manual to. Uh, determine when you should be shifting now usually if you shift a little bit earlier around this range you'll get good fuel mileage but if you want to get a little bit more power rev it all the way out to 1500 1600 if your engine can handle it next up we have the oil pressure gauge now oil is crucial to an engine because it lubricates it obviously but you have to have a certain pressure that your oil is uh, is had in order to circulate it through the engine. So, just uh, at normal operating temperature, find out where your uh, oil pressure should be. It should stay the same at the same RPM and t and temperature all the time. So, just get an idea what what uh, that range is supposed to be, and then. Uh, it's uh, colder when it's when it <laughs> it's higher when it's cold and, and it gets lower when it when the engine warms up so definitely take that into consideration next up when you get this uh, this uh, symbol over here that means that's your coolant uh, temperature now what that is is basically fluid that circulates through the engine to keep it keep it cool so it doesn't get too hot and blow up and circulates through the radiator and then through the engine and, and so forth so a good range you want it usually between 180 uh, well you really want your truck to run around 180 maybe 200 if depending on the model but above 220 your uh, coolant temperature is getting kind of high you may want to take it a little bit easy pull over let it cool down or uh, get it checked out next up is your voltmeter now this when your engine's not on should be around 12 maybe a little bit more you'll usually need at least uh, 11 uh, volts uh, 11 and a half volts to get the engine started but it really depends more on how many amps the batteries have but it, volts will give you a good uh, good idea and also while the engine's on you want it around 14 and plus or minus a half a volt maybe uh, otherwise you probably need a new alternator so definitely get that checked out if you're less than 13 volts while the engine's on X gauge fuel gauge self-explanatory engine needs fuel you know, don't let it run uh, too low or your fuel pumps won't be uh, prop, uh, properly lubricated. Next up, we got primary and secondary air tank pressure gauges. So, like I said, these are both on the tractor. And you have two, every truck has two um, air tanks. Now, one might fill up quicker and then the other, the secondary might start filling up after this is at full pressure. But... When, once they get filled up, they should stay about the same. They're going to go up and down maybe 10 pounds or so. So if you're low on air pressure, you, you have a leak and you definitely, or your compressor is not working, you definitely need to get that checked out. This is not a very common gauge that you usually see on trucks, but it, it's uh, handy to have. It's an amp meter. Obviously, since the lights are on and the engine's not, it's in the negative so it's drawing amps from the battery 
Now when it's in the positive, that's when the alternator, engine's on, the alternator is charging uh, the battery. But this will also tell you if your alternator is bad. Next up, we got the oil temperature. Oil temperatures are generally on a truck higher than your coolant temperature and actually oil temperature will give you a better idea of if it gets too hot if the engine's going to blow up um, before your coolant but um, you know if your coolant is, is way higher than your oil temperature there's something wrong with your coolant system either you have a leak or or something like that and your fan clutch isn't working you need to get that checked out but that's your oil temperature it's uh if you run through the mountains it might get close to 250 but you don't want it to get any more than 250. this next is manifold pressure that's basically uh just the pressure inside your turbo basically it tells you how much power uh, your engine's putting out now if it's usually running about 40 and it's all of a sudden running around 20 well you probably got a problem with your engine and you got to get it checked out. This one's not a very common one. This is your tank uh, pressure in your in your trailer. I've never seen that on a truck before. This new truck has it. It's kind of nice. It's just like the other two gauges, except for this one's on your trailer. Next up is the fuel filter. This measures how much pressure is in the fuel system uh, when when the engine's on and if it has too much pressure then your fuel filter is restricted or clogged so you might might, might want to look into that getting replaced next up, next up we have the diesel exhaust fluid gauge or DEF gauge it's, uh, in every new truck it's going to have that symbol in there uh, but you got to keep this topped off if you run out of DEF your engine is going to shut down so understand how to uh, what that is and and top it off every other time you get fuel now this next one's a pretty interesting one this symbol it's going to tell you how much pressure is on your airbag suspension so the the more weight you have on on your axles the higher it's going to go and get a good idea of where it is when you're close to 34,000 like in this truck it's around 62 uh, PSI and I'll, I'll know I need to I'm getting close on my on my drives when that gets too high next up transmission temperature self-explanatory for the most part but you know if you're pulling pulling a bunch of hills or something like that or if this is too high you probably are low on transmission fluid or you need to take it easy for a bit there next one is your axle temperatures I do this two and one so same thing with your trans it's just your uh, differentials so if this gets too high you're either running it too hard or you need to add some fluid into your uh, differentials it might also be you have water in them and this last one we have the brake applied pressure that means how much uh, pressure is in the brake lines when you're hitting the brakes and how much clamping force is actually on the brakes so keep an eye on that um, if you use too much you know it's you you might overheat your brakes so this is kind of a helpful gauge next up first switch we have this is a manual override for the diesel particulate filter and that's what the symbol looks like so you're gonna if you hit that it'll do a region it'll basically clean out your DPF filter so if you have that symbol up on your information screen right up then push that manual region do it while you're parked and uh, it, it should clean out your um, DPF filter if you if it persists then you need to get it cleaned now this is a switch that I really like having this is what's called your manual override fan switch so generally like I said your coolant is going to run around 180 200 and the fans going to automatically kick on at an optimum temperature because you want the engine to stay cool enough to stay together but also 
uh, run thermally efficient, uh, so it's going to run hot. The hotter it is, the more fuel it burns. Uh, so, but if it's running too hot, you can always flip that, and it'll automatically turn on your um, engine fan. Now, anytime you see anything with parentheses on a uh, gauge, or uh, like here on the brake apply pressure, you see a little foot pedal in parentheses, that means it's a brake. But this has a little engine symbol in there. That means that's your engine brake, or your jake brake, as it's commonly uh, called. And a lot of times it'll have different speeds. This engine has three different settings. So this is low, medium, and high. I keep it on high so that I have a maximum braking. Now this is just your cruise control. Uh, just self-explanatory. This is turn it on and off. And down here is to go slower and up here is to go faster. Climate control, radio. I did a, just did a video of this automatic traction control button. Flip that on when you're... You need a little bit extra traction, you're driving through the snow. This is an anti-lock brake override switch. You flip that and uh, it'll disconnect your anti-lock brakes if you're going off-road into the uh, field or something. This, I've explained this before, but it bears repeating because I absolutely love it. You flip the switch down, it'll tell you how much fuel is in your right tank. You hit flip the switch up well, look I got a little bit more in my left tank next to it this is your fuel heater switch it'll uh, I got heated fuel lines and a heated fuel tank it's great this rear AC button that's just your uh, to engage your climate control in your sleeper and this is your sleeper light. You got a little light and a dude sleeping down here. That's your sleeper light. Generally, if you have a switch that looks like this, it means your load lights or your lights behind your cab or tractor. And this one, a lot of you trucks probably don't have it, but this is my oversized, what's called a beacon light, a little flashing light on the top. Oh, can't forget these. So this one is on every truck. Or should be if you have dual live axles um, so what it does is there's a center differential normally just one of your wheels are spinning and it'll be the wheel with the least amount of traction for efficiency and tire wear but this will lock your front and rear wheels so one wheel on the back is going to be spinning one wheel on the front is going to be spinning give you a little bit more traction this is your fifth wheel slide button slide your fifth wheel pretty self-explanatory this is your air suspension gauge you flip it uh, that way to air it up and you flip it down there it'll drop your bags and so your fifth wheel and frame are actually going to lower and uh, you should it'll make it easier to get underneath the trailer and this last one it just basically means it's your rear dump valve so if you have a spread axle trailer it's going to dump the uh, bags in the rear uh, and make it a little bit easier to make a tight turn. Don't get in the habit of using that. It's kind of hard on these suspension. Wears out the tires. It's Matt with Tisford Truckers, and that's how you use all these gauges. Have a great day.